Welcome to 6.4. And you're thinking, what? 6.4? How do we get to 6.4? We were just at 6.1 just a moment ago, or last time. And here we are at 6.4 already. And yep or depper, we are zipping over 6.2. So let me give you a quick summary of 6.2 and 6.3 before we jump into 6.4. So I'm trying to zip through this uh, chapter uh, 6 in order, we, in order that we will have more time for uh, chapter 7 before the midterm. 6.1, let's remind ourselves, is talking about similar polygons. So congruent, congruent polygons means same shape, same size. Similar means that they have same shape, yes, but proportional size, you will remember. Okay, so they want to relate now <clears throat> this idea of similarity to transformation. So which transformation do we have that creates a uh, polygon that is similar to its pre-image? And you are correct, it's dilation. So if we dilate, <clears throat> like in this case, it seems like, I'm not sure what direction they're going, but let's just uh, pretend as if they're going from smaller to bigger, so they are enlarging. This is the pre-image, and it's being enlarged to the image. <clears throat> uh, and you can have a, you could create a scale factor uh, between those, and these two shapes are similar to one another. And that scale factor is the ratio of the, the sides. Remember we talked about that before, that the scale factor between two objects that are two polygons that are similar uh, is the, the ratio of corresponding sides. And it has to be the same ratio of all corresponding sides in order for those two polygons to be, con uh, almost said congruent, uh, to be similar. So that's the gist of section two. That was fun, huh? Let's do section three now. And section three is proving triangles similar by AA. And you know from <clears throat> our work with proving triangles congruent that AA means angle, angle. So I've summarized, here's a summary of section three right there. And let's talk about that. <clears throat> so let's say that we have two triangles and we know we can pick up from uh, the indications here that we have one pair of angles that are congruent and we have a second pair of angles that are congruent. And now the question is, is that sufficient amount of information to prove that these two triangles are congruent? And the answer is no. Because remember, we have our five different uh, theorems of trans or uh, yeah theorems for proving that two triangles are congruent, and AA is not one of them. Hey, but think about this: if we know that two of the <coughs> angles, uh, pairs of angles, are congruent, so for example, here we know that uh, these two angles are 40. Each of these are 40 and each of these are 50, then what, is, what does that tell us about the third pair? Hmm. Well, remember that in a triangle, the sum of the interior angles is how many degrees? 180 degrees. And so, if uh, uh, we take 180 degrees and then subtract 40, that will give us uh, 140 degrees and then subtract 50, and that's going to give us 90 degrees. So we know, we can calculate, that uh, this angle has to be 90 degrees because the sum of the interior angles has to be 180 degrees. It will always be that way for any kind of triangle. And then over here, let's do the same thing. And wait a second, uh, 40, so uh, 180 minus 40 is 140, and 140 minus 50, that's 90. So we do know that these two angles in this particular situation are 90 and therefore these two angles are congruent. And that is the case always, that if we have two pairs 
of angles that are congruent, then we know for sure that the third pair is also congruent. So coming back over here to your notes, if we have, uh, or if we are told that two pairs of angles are congruent, well then we could put another big red A here because we know for sure that these other two angles are also congruent. And is that going to help us though to be able to prove that these two angles or two triangles are congruent? And the answer is no, because I need a side, right? Uh, we do have angle side angle and angle angle side, but notice that we always need at least one uh, pair of sides that are congruent. But if we do have three pairs of angles that are congruent, remember we said with uh, in section one that with similar polygons that the corresponding angles are congruent. And so if we can prove that the corresponding angles are congruent, then uh, it is true that those two triangles are similar. So um, I can't really prove that to you right now, but uh, and it does prove it in the book, but I don't have time to do that to walk you through that. But uh, take it uh, um, from the book <laughs> that uh, knowing that we have three pairs of angles that are congruent, uh, that is sufficient to prove that they are similar. In fact, if we only have two pairs of angles that are congruent, that is sufficient to prove that those two triangles are similar. Now let's jump into 6.3 and in 6.3 we, uh, no, no, 6.4, 6.4 that makes more sense. We are told, oop, we are given uh, two other uh, theorems and one is the SSS theorem and the other one is the SAS theorem. Now you're thinking, wait a second, I've seen this SSS thing before. Yeah, you're right, we did that with the congruence. So what are they saying? Are they saying that if we have three pairs of sides that are congruent, then the two triangles are similar? No, that's not what they're saying. They're saying if we have three pairs of sides, not that are congruent, but three pairs of sides that are what? Three pairs of sides that are proportional is what we're talking about here for uh, similarity. Or in other words, uh, they each pair of sides have the same ratio. They have the same ratio. And if we can prove that, then we know that the two triangles are similar to one another. So that's kind of what I tried to do here. Notice that I, uh, first of all, I labeled the big triangle as big and the small triangle as small. And then they say AB over DE. So this is a ratio. This is a ratio when you have two numbers related through division. And then when you put two ratios, when you equ equate two ratios, then that is a proportion. So look what we're doing here. We're saying this uh, pair, the ratio of this pair of sides is equal to the ratio of the second pair of sides, which is equal to the ratio of this third pair of sides. And it must be that way, that each of these three ratios must be equal to each other. You cannot say, okay, I, I have two of the ratios that are equal, but the third is different. Well, if that's the case, then the two triangles are not similar to each other. And then uh, a third theorem to prove that uh, two triangles are similar to each other is SAS. And same concept uh, for the sides. So we have one pair of sides that create a particular ratio and a second pair of sides in the same, I guess it doesn't really matter in that sense, but a second pair of sides uh, that create a ratio and that ratio is equal to the ratio of the first pair. And then this angle here needs to be the what angle? You are right, it needs to be the included angle between those two sides. So similar to what we had talked about with uh, congruence, that it needs to be 
the uh, uh, included angle. In fact, let me go and put a big old fat A in here to indicate that we have a pair of angles that are congruent. Okay, so again, very helpful to go back to 6.1 and remember that when we're saying they're similar, then the corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are proportional. So similarity means same, same shape and proportional, proportional size. And now we have three theorems to prove that two triangles are similar to each other. AA, SSS, and SAS. So let's put some of these things to work. <clears throat> let's look over here in our textbook. In fact, let me crank this up so it's a little bit bigger for you. Probably just need one of these. I don't want to make it too big. So here are three triangles and they're asking whether or not these triangles are similar uh, to each other. And so let's start off. We can only do uh, one pair at a time. And so they're saying triangle ABC and DEF. So this is triangle one, let me call it, and this is triangle two. And we want to compare triangle one and triangle two. So let's ignore triangle three for right now. And what they've done here, very wisely, is uh, figure out here in this triangle, there's the shortest side, that's eight. Here's the medium side, and here's the longest side. So short, medium, and longest. And then they do the same thing over here. Short, mm, uh, where's medium? Medium's over here, and longest. Now if it was me, what I would do is redraw this guy and I would say make it in the same orientation as the other one. So short is here, medium is going around to clockwise, so what is the length of my medium on this one? It is 9, and then longest is 12. Okay, so now it's easier to compare uh, these two triangles when they are in the same orientation. And so remember, in order for these two to be parallel, parallel, where'd you come up with that man? In order for these two triangles to be similar, the uh, corresponding sides need to have the same ratio. So, and what they're doing, they're doing one over two. So let's do triangle one over triangle two. So it does matter which triangle you have on top and which one you have on bottom. So triangle one, let's start off with the short, shortest side. Can I see that? And <clears throat> that is uh, 8 on the top and uh, 6 underneath. So 8 and 6, those correspond to each other. So I have the ratio of 8 over 6. If I was to reduce that, I would get 4 over 3. Okay, so that's the ratio of these, of the shortest sides of these two triangles. Now they want to do the longest side. So the ratio here of 16 over 12 and I can reduce that down to 4 over 3. Hey, very nice. These have the same ratio. Is that sufficient to prove congruence? No, it's not. All I have right now is just SS uh, similarity, uh, but I need SSS. I need all three sides to have the same ratio. So let's look at the longest side now. Here is your longest side. And so 12 over 9 and bada bing. It has the same, if I was to reduce it, it has the same ratio. So I do have SSS similarity between these two triangles, so therefore these two triangles are uh, similar. Now they want us to do, this is triangle three uh, over here. <clears throat> and notice that when I, if I was to rearrange that guy, and then compare sides, um, then I would have a ratio of one to, with the shortest sides, I have a ratio of one with the longest sides, but I have a different ratio for the medium sides. And remember, I, the ratios need to be the same for all three pairs of angles, or I'm oh, sorry, all three pairs of sides. And so therefore, triangles one and three are not similar to each other. Yes, it is true that two pairs of the sides have the same ratio, 
but the third pair does not have the same ratio. Okay, so I am ready now, and hopefully you are ready also, for me to get you ready, prepare you, for these questions down here that you have on your uh, notes. <clears throat> Which of the three triangles are similar? Here are our three triangles. I've labeled them one, two, three, just to make it easier to be able to identify. And we want to uh, compare, we want to determine uh, which pairs of these three angle, three triangles are similar. So just like we just did a moment ago, you can only take one pair at a time. So let's take this pair of triangles and compare them and see if their corresponding sides have the same ratio. And if the, all three of the, all three pairs of corresponding sides do have the same ratio, then these two triangles are similar. So let's do that between angles one and two, and then let's do it between angles three and four. I'm going to say three and four, uh, two and three. Okay, <laughs> why do they put three and four? What are you doing, man? That's not supposed to be three and four. Uh, let's make a in-flight correction here so I don't mislead you and so that should be what do we want to do uh, triangles one and three right that makes more sense okay there we go so first let's compare triangles one and two and then triangles two and three and then triangles one and three see what we're doing so let's do uh, triangles one and two now like I said and I started to do there on the, in the book let's change the orientation and since this guy is the big one, uh, the law of mass tonnage, the larger uh, triangle gets to stay where it is. And let's change these other uh, triangles to put them in the same orientation. So what I did was I took this shape and I kept, I just shrunk it down because obviously this one here is smaller. So I just kind of shrunk it down a little bit and uh, drew though the same shape, but a, a smaller size. And then I took that same shape and make it, made it even smaller size. And then what I want to do, what I want you to do, is take this uh, triangle one and then change the orientation in such a way that it's the same orientation.